Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to continue with pocket base, and we're going to skip some of the ceremonies that I usually do, uh, just because we kind of know what we're doing here with pocket base. All right, so enough talking. Let's jump in and get our hands dirty. So we're going to pretty much jump right in. In the previous video, just to remind you where we were, we set up pocket base, which is basically just download it unzip it, ran it, create a collection, um, created some items in that collection. We had an items collection. And then we tried to do a get on that resource endpoint, the items um, endpoint. And we saw that it fails. And that's because by default, Pocket Base locks down or requires you to be authenticated, in this case with admin, because that's what's the rule that said only admin can use that endpoint. We unlock it. And then we... Um, we're able to use our get um, methods call from the command line. So in this video, I'm going to wrap up the CRUD type um, operations or methods you would use for any resource endpoint, right? So remember CRUD is create, retrieve, update, and delete. So we already did the retrieve part. So we'll see how to use HTTP endpoints to do the create, to do update, and do delete. So what you see I have here is my pocket base is running. Um, I'm going to zoom into this part. We did this is already when we did the get. Um, just let's go back here. So this is our collection right now with only two records. And so what we can do is we want to be able to create, let's say, a record. So how do we create a record? So if we go to the API preview, and we go to create. If you're using JavaScript or Dart, well, they have libraries for that. But we want to see what you can do using the HTTP methods directly. So in order to do a create, we have to do a post, which makes sense. We know that already. And we post to the collections items record. Remember, it could be the item name or the item ID, the collection ID or the collection name. So what's in that JSON body parameter? So the name is required. So this is coming directly from our collection saying that name is required. Description is optional, price is optional, and ID is optional. If we do not provide an ID, one is created for us, and we're going to go that route. If you want to provide an ID, note that it must be 15 characters to create an ID. Otherwise, it will fail. So for now, we're going to ignore everything else. We'll see that oh, if everything is successful, what we should get is a response back for that record, telling us the new ID, um, the collection it was created in, the collection name, the date and so on, and then, you know, the name, description, and price. So that's what it should look like when we create it. All right, so let's go back here. And I like using HTTP um, IE, so I'm going to do the HTTP IE. And this was our previous command to get that specific record. But remember, we're doing a post. And HTTP IE is very nice in terms of being very clever um, when you, if I were to call it like this, it means a get on that endpoint. But if I decide to set up, I want the thing to have a name, let's call it item number three. And so I can say item number three. And so this alone tells HTTPIE to do a post. I don't actually have to say what method I'm doing, just it infers it. You'll see that I will have to specify the method because the default might not be what we want, but we'll get to that. And so a description. And so description is equal to this was this item was created from HTTP IE. And then uh, what about the price? Okay, price. This is interesting. So what this do, these do is if I use the equal, it's going to make the value for these fields string. But I want the value for price to be a number. So if you're if you want the value for your field, your JSON field to be not string, let's say like a null, a number, or a boolean, you should use colon equal. And so I want this to be, let's just go with um, 09 to 25. Okay. Um, now that I have to put 09, but let's say $9.25. Um, so something like that. And so I have the minus V here to show you what HTTPA is going to create. Oh, so let's see here. Unrecognized arguments. Okay, so I think the minus V there is stripping it up. 
So let me just take out the minus V and put it all the way to the end. That, that, and then do at the end, I'll put minus V and press enter. And yes, that was the problem. As you can see, it selected post because it saw I had some um, key and values, right? Or field and value set. So it figured, oh, I want to do a post. And it created this JSON for me. And notice description is a string, name is a string, price is just a number. And then 200 OK. And what did I get back? The collection, collection ID, collection name. When it was created, the description, of course, and the idea of my new record and the name and, of course, the price. And so if I go back here and I click refresh, I should see item number three. And sure enough, there it is. Um, of course, we can go continue to create items. You know, I can do 70, this item number four. And sure enough, um, create that item too, refresh. And so you can see very easy to use on um, the endpoint. Of course, if we didn't want users to be able to create items if they weren't authenticated, we can set this to admin only for now. And then when we have users, which you're going to see in two or three videos, you'll see how we can restrict it for specific users and so on. So, OK, so that's how you create. Let's update um, item number three. Um, as a matter of fact, um, that's pretty easy because we can say, let's change the price to, um, let's go um, 1001 and let's just change the description to updated item. And then we are going to change the name. We still want it to be called item number four. So we'll take that out. And of course we want to use the ID for item number four. So we have to grab that and we'll paste it here. Now, how do I know this is what I'm supposed to do? Well, if I go back to API preview and I go to update, you'll see that it says forward slash API collection and the collection name or collection ID, and then the records and then colon ID. And notice though that the method I need to use now is patch. If you recall what we just did, if I just did this HTTP is going to do a post with this JSON object to this endpoint. And JSON, HTTP doesn't know anything about the endpoint to know whether or not this is a specific item or not. So it's just going to still do a post. So we don't want to do a post. We want to do a patch. And different endpoints might choose to do either put or patch to do an update. Here they are saying that oh, they, they use patch. And as in terms of changing something or uh, making changes to it. And so again, they're saying um, for the patch, um, the name is required. I am going to ignore that because we already have a name. So I'm not going to send another name because I don't want to change the name. And let's see if that's significant, if that's, um, if this fails. So there we go. And as you can see, it says I'm going to do a patch HTTP method, which is what we want. And that's what we required. And um, we sent a JSON with the description and the new price. And as you can see, when it returns, it's still item number four, because we didn't change that. The price has been updated, and the description has been updated. And our date should also have been updated. Previously, the updated date would have matched the created date. So since we updated it slightly later, now about two minutes later, we see that's different. So that tells us that that worked. So if we go back here and refresh, we can see updated item with a new price. So we have covered list, get, created, update. And so the last one would be delete. We're going to ignore real time. That's for monitoring changes. We're not going to talk about that right now. So let's say we want to delete item number three. So this is the ID for item number three. So I'll just go ahead and copy it from here. Now, if I didn't know that, I could get the entire list, look for the one I wanted, get its ID, but we have the UI. So that's going to look something very much like this. I want to delete a specific item, and so I put it there. Now, none of this should really be surprising to you because these are some of the things that we did when we created endpoints. So here we have to do the delete method, and we just specify the ID. You don't need to pass anything in the body. 
the response is going to be null if you're successful, 204. So there we go. We have the ID in the URL path. We just need to change this from patch to delete because otherwise HTTP wouldn't know that we want to do a delete. Bam. And notice oh, we didn't get back anything in the body. And well, I didn't. And then if we go here, we didn't get back anything. If we go and we refresh, you'll see record number three is gone. No surprise. We didn't get any error message here. It's exactly like it, it says 204 content for successful and no content, meaning nothing was sent back. And there you go. This is how easy it is to do card operation against your pocket based collection. I want to keep this video short, so I'm going to end it here. I want to say thanks again to Mikhail, our Patreon subscriber. If you want to join Mikhail and be a Patreon subscriber, here's some information on how you do that. Otherwise, there are other ways in which you can support the channel. I still have my Tesla referral code for anyone who is looking to buy anything from Tesla. Solar panel, solar roof, power wall, a Tesla car, whatever. Anything from Tesla, Tesla swag, you name it. You can use my Tesla referral code. That also um, helps me out because it gives me some points um, with Tesla. I hope you learned something. Thanks for coming and watching the video. If you are new to the channel or you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing after you're watching the content. Hopefully you like it and you'd like to be a part of this community. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. Just taking the time to subscribe. Um, you didn't have to do that, but you did. And so I really appreciate it. And definitely coming back to watch the videos. Take care. Stay safe. See you in the next video. Bye.